Hey everybody, Zach here, and welcome to another edition of Science for Social Distancing. Today we have a super special segment for you guys. We are actually out in the field for the first time ever um, in honor of World Rabies Day. So today, September 28th, is World Rabies Day, and we are here with Brian Bjorklund, who is a rabies biologist, a biologist with the USDA, and Dr. Patel behind me. And what we are gonna do is we're gonna talk about rabies safety, rabies control, and we're gonna talk a little bit about how it affects our local wildlife and how you guys can stay safe at home. And then also learn a little bit more about the active prevention and control programs going on in our community. Um, so you can be up to date and be as safe as possible. And so before we dive in, I just had two quick announcements for you guys. One, thank you so much for supporting our program. Um, Science for Social Distancing is really starting to take off. We're seeing more and more views each week. We've been talking to local schools, um, a lot of local individuals, and we are so grateful for the support. So we're gonna do two things to hopefully improve your viewing experience. The first is we're gonna start announcing ahead of time um, when we're gonna be doing these programs. This way, we're not popping into your feed here and there. You'll actually be able to schedule ahead of time and tune in. And the second is we're gonna try to pull in more and more special guests. Um, so we wanna expand this and make this as educational as possible for viewers of all ages. Um, and as always, for those of you guys who are learning at home right now, or even in school, if you're following along, if there are topics you wanna to cover, please let us know. We'd love to work them in. Um, rabies is one, believe it or not, we've gotten quite a few requests for, so we're super excited to be out here. Okay? And I do apologize, guys, it is pouring a little bit, but guess what, this is real life, and uh, this is what field work looks like a lot of the time. Um, so we have uh, two good sports. Um, so I'm gonna introduce them here. Um, so everybody. Uh, Brian, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure, my name is Brian Bjorkman. I'm a wildlife biologist and the uh, coordinator of the Cape Cod Rabies Program. Um, I work for the United States Department of Agriculture. Perfect, thank you, Brian. And as you all know, my co-host, Dr. Patel, is here <laughs> as well. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about rabies. Um, so when we do that, Brian, can you start? What is World Rabies Day? So World Rabies Day is a global initiative to, um, to essentially uh, raise awareness of rabies and to encourage the public to vaccinate their pets and stay and stay safe um, and protect themselves against rabies. That's awesome. Um, so when you hear rabies, you think a lot about, um, you know, you see the cartoon in your mind, the dog bite, the cat bite. What does rabies look like here in Massachusetts? What gets it and what should we look out for? Of course, so in, in uh, Eastern North America, we have two variants of rabies. We have uh, raccoon variant rabies and bat variant. Um, in Massachusetts, we are really focused on, on managing the raccoon variant rabies, and that's typically what you when you when you hear of a rabid raccoon or a skunk or a fox, it's because that animal has uh, raccoon variant rabies, um, and uh, that's typically what you're protecting you know your dogs and, and cats against. Um, the rabies vaccine that your animal your your pets receive is effective on all all variants of rabies, so whether it's, you know uh, raccoon rabies here or bat rabies or mongoose variant rabies in Puerto Rico yeah. or uh, fox rabies in uh, in Europe. It, the vaccine works for all different strains. That's great. Um, and so I know you guys have been working extremely hard over probably the last couple decades to control the spread of rabies. Is it working? Are we seeing less? It is. So, so let's back up uh, to 1992 when raccoon rabies was first. <laughs> You're yeah. getting so exact. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when, when raccoon rabies was first discovered in Massachusetts, uh, that prompted... Um, town and local officials, state officials, and the, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention to see what we could do to prevent rabies from spreading to Cape Cod. Uh, and that included distributing baits like these uh, to wildlife um, to inoculate them to prevent rabies from crossing the canal onto the Cape. Wow. And that, that proved to be effective for over 10 years uh, to keep rabies off the Cape. But unfortunately, by 2004, it, is, uh, it hopped the canal uh, a few rabid raccoons were discovered and born in Falmouth, and by 2006, despite our best efforts to get in front of um, the rabies front, it was in Provincetown by 2006. And since then, we've really been battling by vaccinating wildlife through these oral vaccines and live trapping uh, rabies vectors to vaccinate them by hand to push rabies pretty much back off the Cape. And we're happy to report that we have not had a single case of raccoon rabies on the Cape since the spring of 2013. So that is awesome. I don't know if you just heard that, but we haven't had um, a single case of raccoon variant rabies here for quite a while. 
Um, and that is in no small part thanks to this exemplary program. These guys do incredible work. They're out here, as you can see, in all elements, rain or shine, out here getting soaked, helping keep you and your pets safe. So we are super grateful. Um, and the other thing we're gonna do while we're here, we're not just standing in a random patch of woods, we're actually standing at a rabies bait station. Um, so Brian, do you want to describe a little bit about what a base station is and how it factors into the overall plan for rabies control? Sure, so the, the typical means for distributing these baits is by vehicle or aircraft. So we, we just drive or drive all these roads and throw these baits in areas where raccoons and coyotes will come across them. That's not always all that feasible because there's so many people down here on the Cape, it's very populated. So we developed a bait station that we can deploy, um, kind of tucked away in a, in, a, in a wood lot or a woodland or next to a dumpster like this one. Um, where people and their pets aren't likely to have access to it, but raccoons can visit that like a raccoon gumball machine. <laughs> uh, so it, it, they've been really effective. So we've used these in um, areas of high human density, like South Yarmouth and Hyannis, and, and up here near the, near the canal. Um, we have stations deployed in downtown Plymouth and uh, the Buzzards Bay area as well. That's great. So you heard it here, folks, like a raccoon gumball machine. <laughs> um, these are specially formulated, nothing you would want to eat, um, but I believe they're based on fish meal, is that correct? They have a fish meal coating that uh, is what attracts the wild animals to them. That's awesome. So they're specially designed to draw in um, the types of animals we worry about getting rabies, um, and then it safely vaccinates them. And so, Brian, can we see the bait station? Absolutely. All right, folks, All right. let's take a walk. This is the rabies control truck. By the way, if you guys see these driving around your neighborhoods, have no fear. Um, they are out there protecting you. And I think Brian can give us a little more info in a few minutes about um, what to do if you find a bait or if you have questions. Right. This is one of our rabies vaccine bait stations. Um, like I said, we deploy these in areas of higher human density so that you know, we're not just driving around throwing these baits on the roadsides where uh, your kids or pets are likely to find them. Cool. And all these bait stations have a label on it, um, explains what it is, please don't touch it, and a contact number if you, if you wanted more information. Wow. And that's it. Yeah, so very each, good. Each station will have baits for approximately three weeks. We monitor, monitor every station over that course of three weeks. At that three-week mark, we return to every station and remove any baits that are left over. So. That's awesome. So, I mean, as you guys can see, that's pretty simple technology, but it's effective. And so, Brian, you just loaded about 30 baits in there. Do you expect you get, you know, 20, 30 animals that will be inoculated so, because of this? So each station has 60 baits. Um, oh, wow. Um, we, after we, uh, after the baiting season is over, our session is over, we return to all the areas that we put the baits out and we live trap raccoons, skunks, foxes, and whatnot. So we can uh, take some samples and look at the vaccination rates to see how effective the the, the bait distribution program was. Um, so we're, we're, we're psyched if we hit about the 40% mark. So 40% of the animals that we that we trap and sample um, have a positive rabies titer. That's, that's, we're pretty happy with that. And that's, um, that, that's a success for us. Absolutely. I mean, that is, that is an incredible rate. Um, and so we can attest to that in our hospital. As you, as you guys know, um, on Cape Cod, we are one of the only places that take in rabies vector species, and that's your foxes, your skunks, your raccoons, your bats, your um, uh, groundhogs, woodchucks. And um, one note here is the bats actually don't eat this bait. Is that correct, Brian? That is correct. And there is work that's being done to try to develop a bait that uh, will attract bats, but with their feeding habits, it'll be awfully difficult. So yeah. we're not really at that point yet where we have a vaccine for yeah. bats. Yeah, until they can put the vaccine in a mosquito, I don't think we're at that level yet. <laughs> um, but no, it's an incredible success. And so, as I was saying, we see quite a few rabies vector species at our hospital. And I'm going to turn over to Dr. Patel here, you guys all know. So Priya, how often are we seeing rabid animals in our care? I'm going to put my mask down just a little bit because I'm six feet away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so very well. um, but we get in um, a rabies vector animal, which can include a bat, a woodchuck, coyote, fox, raccoon, skunk, um, pretty much every week, if not every other day. Um, so we are one of the only facilities on Cape Cod that take in and rehabilitate um, rabies vector species. So we have a full staff um, who are vaccinated against rabies to protect ourselves, and we have all the uh, PPE, personal protective equipment, so that we can handle these animals safely. Great. 
And so as we're sitting here talking about rabies, just a little bit of background. Um, rabies, if contracted by human, is virtually always a fatal virus. Um, so there's nothing you want to take chances with. And there are things we can do, both preventative, um, meaning things like the rabies baiting program, putting out baits to wildlife. Um, also, if you work with wildlife closely um, or in the veterinary field, most people get a rabies preventative vaccine. Um, and these are all things we do to protect ourselves. In the state of Massachusetts, I believe, usually about a thousand animals are submitted each year um, for rabies testing. Um, and we're very lucky that we have a pretty low percentage around, I think under 4%, you said, are positive, correct? Um, which is pretty good. Um, so now, this brings us back to you guys. And what does this mean in your everyday life? So Priya, I know it is pouring out and you guys are both being really good sports right now. Um, yeah, but I, I hope so. If I give out here, guys, it's because we, we drowned. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so if you come across the rabies vector species, any of those species we just listed, the foxes, the raccoons, uh, the common ones we see in Massachusetts quite a bit, how do you stay safe? How do you protect yourself in your own backyard and your pets against rabies? So if you see a rabies vector species, any of the ones we just listed, Please do not approach them, do not handle them, and most importantly, do not feed them. And even juvenile, orphan, baby, coyotes, foxes, raccoons can potentially carry the virus. So just the act of bottle feeding them or syringe feeding is considered potential exposure because there's saliva contact, and that virus is spread in the saliva. So please, if you see an animal in need, a rabies vector species, Give us a call or your local animal control before approaching the animal, and we will try to do what's best to keep you and the animal safe. That is awesome. And um, so that's right. Uh, so the New England Wildlife Centers, our Cape Cod branch and our Weymouth branch, both provide this service. If you've been bitten or scratched or come into close contact with one of these rabies vector species, or likewise, if one of your pets has, um, we are more than happy to help. Um, we, we routinely um, assess these animals and can even send them out for testing if need be. So please give us a call. Um, and you can also call your local Department of Public Health, Mass Department of Public Health, Animal Control. Um, there's a lot of resources out there. The one thing you want to avoid is not calling. If you come into close contact with these species and you're at all worried that you're at risk, um, it's always better to ask and there's some really friendly folks that will give you good advice. Um, so as we're going to close out here, Brian, I want to ask you, is there anything else you want to tell folks about rabies and what is your best rabies safety tips? So in terms of the, uh, the baits, we just ask that, that everybody um, uh, follows their, their, you know, the, their local uh, leash laws because while the baits won't harm your pets, uh, every bait that is picked up by a known vaccinated dog is, a, is considered a dose that is lost for an unvaccinated raccoon. And these, these baits aren't cheap. You know, so if we, if, we, if we get reports that you know, 5, 10, 15, however many dogs are picking up baits, then um, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a hit to the program because those, those baits should and could have gone to, to wildlife. Perfect. Um, as, and as Priya said, you know, don't don't feed wildlife. Um, there's more than there's more than ample resources out there to you know for the wildlife to survive on their own. Uh, and when you when you have a localized food source like uh, the dog dog dish outside or something like that, you're just asking for a, for an issue when you bring these animals into a confined area. So that just creates conflicts, you know. And when 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 animals are in close contact with each other, it's not always a good thing. Perfect. Well, Brian, thank you so much. This was awesome. Priya, I'll let you close out too. Um, and then I promise we'll get you both out of the rain here. Um, if you could have one parting message to tell people about rabies um, and ways they can stay safe, um, what would that be? Um, it would be keep your pets up to date on vaccines. If you see injured wildlife, please call um, your local animal control officer or us first before interacting. We want to do what's best um, to keep wildlife safe as well as you. And rabies um, is doesn't seem to be a big issue in the United States, but it's only because we have some great programs such as what the USDA is doing and also keeping everyone's pets up to date on their vaccines. That is awesome. You guys are great. Um, as are all of you out there watching, thank you so much for joining us. If you'd like to learn more about these programs, and I encourage you to do so, especially on World Rabies Day, um, you can check out the USDA website, um, the Cape Cod Rabies Task Force, which actually now includes the southeastern portion of Massachusetts, also has a really active, awesome in, um, Facebook group as well. Uh, you can also visit our website, the newildlife.org, for 
Weymouth and capewildlifecenter.com for the Cape. Um, and as always, we hope you guys enjoyed this. If there are more topics you want to cover, if there's a public health issue you want us to tackle, if you're at home working on your science homework and you need a little boost, let us know. We'd love to rope it into what we're doing. Um, we appreciate all of you guys. And until the next time, um, stay safe out there, wash your hands, and we will see you soon. Thanks.